appearing. And it's going to keep asking you, what does this mean? So for example, this one says dq dt. So it's talking about the d part is a change. It's saying, what's the rate of change of the top quantity okay, with respect to the change in the bottom quantity? So whatever Q stands for, all right, you're going to say it's the rate of change of that quantity over the rate of change of the bottom. Okay? So this is a graph, for example, it's not the only one, it's just a very uh, random sort of graph and it says, what are you actually finding when you do dq dt? You are finding a derivative, but what's a derivative always stand for? What is the basic that it always stands for? Anybody? It stands for the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the tangent is what that de Q de T stands for. So if you put in a tangent at any spot, you're finding its gradient at that position. And that's what a de Q de T has found. It's found the gradient, yes, is the gradient of the tangent at that particular position. So the question in your book says, in your course reader, a circular disk, so straight away there's a clue that this is a circle that we're working with, expands as it is heated. The area, which comes to us in centimetres squared, of the disk increases according to this formula, that A is equal to 4T squared plus T. So it says where T is the time in minutes. So I know that the area is in centimetres squared. I know that the time is in minutes. Okay, so I've got my units sort of looked after there. There's centimetres squared and there's minutes. And it says find the rate of increase in the area after five minutes. So see how it says find the rate of increase? It would like us, so if this is going to be our area statement. So this says I'd like dA dt. Okay, so it's always the uh, variable on the left hand side, so it's dA over the variable on the right hand side, which is in t, so dA to t. So the very first thing in your notes it says, all right, that the rate of increase in the area will be dA dt. What change in A with respect to what change in t? So first thing is, do you know what dA dt stands for? Right, so try not to take shortcuts anymore. Don't put a dash in this particular section. Make sure you sort of clear it out in your head, announce it. It is a dA with respect to dt. And the reason for that is you, then you can make sure your units come out correctly as well. So it says, find the derivative. If I give you a statement for a, find a derivative. So the derivative is 8t, pretty basic, plus 1. This would be anywhere on the graph. So this is the general derivative. So this would be anywhere on the particular function. But you want it at the 5 mark. So now you've got the derivative and you say, well, I want to stop and look at what happens at the 5 mark, which is different to the other positions. So if you can imagine at the 5 mark and you say, well, I want to know what the tangent is doing right there. And the idea is you lock in your units. Now, it's been locked in at the beginning. Just so you can say before, what most people do is find the answer and run out uh, away from it rather than make sure you check the units that it should come in. So once you've put the 5 in, you say 8 times 5 plus 1 gives you 41. So the answer will be 41. And why these particular units? Because the dA was changing, was the uh, rate at which the area was changing. So it's the area units per, and then it's the time unit. So up here, you could also have said these were in centimetres squared and these were in minutes. So when you get to the very bottom, you declare it's 41 and it's going to be really crucial that your units, because as a, this is just a general reminder as well for this week's test, anytime there are units, people are losing half a mark because they're not establishing what the units were. And that's just sloppy of you, okay, just in general. So make sure you come up with the answer as well as the units. So this is saying that at the five minute mark, if you were expanding this circular disk, okay, the actual disk is changing at 41 centimetres squared per minute at the five minute mark. But if I said just as a comparison, so I'll put here as compared to, pick another time and I'll say t equals 10 minutes. Do you think, just from your knowledge about this graph, do you think that tangent will get steeper at that position or flatter? Steeper or flatter? 
steeper or flatter? Well, here comes the numerical answer and the numerical answer says it's going to be 81 centimetres squared per minute. So the rate at which the area is changing depends on what time you froze it at. Okay? So it's not the same rate everywhere in this particular uh, question. So it's about what was it at this time? What was it at this time? What was it at this time? So it's not the same. Not in this question, all right? It's not the same. So what you've got then, it says you've got this puddle of water and it's been put out in about five little parts. Dave has put this out. Now, anyone that did any sort of extension maths might have come across this. And what we're trying to enforce here, even though this is the very start of it, we really want you to break down what these particular dr, dt, you'll see that it's coming up with a da, dr, and then there's a da, dt. So we're breaking this up and saying, this is how you should attack it. So it's been spelt out for you. For anyone that's never done this before, that's why it's got so many steps to it. So it says the radius of a circular puddle, so we've got our circle again, all right, is increasing at a rate of, and it says three centimetres per second. Now this is not the area of that, because it didn't come in centimetres squared. Did you notice it's actually a radius, which comes in centimetres, and it's got time, which is coming in seconds. So the time is coming in seconds. So I can tell from my units, I've got a radius being measured in centimetres, and I've got a time being measured in seconds. And it says there that it's told you the rate. Now this is different to the first question. The first question, all right, just told you what the area was. This is telling me the rate. So first stop, it says, what does dr dt mean? And in the question, there's not much there in the question, but what is its value? So dr dt, what do you think you're measuring when you say dr dt? It's a change in, change in radius over the change in time. Change in the radius compared to a change in time. You can say this comes in centimetres. You can say this comes in seconds. All right. And what is its value? Can you see the clues being given to you? So it's told me that its value will be, so dr dt, is equal to 3 and I know it's 3 because see the units are coming as centimetres per second. So it's telling me that this radius is changing every second the radius is changing by 3 centimetres. Every second the radius changes by 3 centimetres. That's what that is declaring. Okay? So dr dt, there's a lot of clues about the units to use. Alright, so I'll just before I bring in the next one, which sort of covers that one there. Start thinking about find a formula for A. So it's talking about just an area of a circle. So area of a circle would be, so I'll put area of a circle, would have been A is equal to pi R squared. So it says come up with an area. And then it just says in terms of R, well, I think that's it. It just wants me to have remembered that I use that as my starting point. In, que in the question above, it handed it to you, but in this question, your job is to bring it with you. So then it says, if I now ask you what DA, DR represents and find its value. So first of all, what is DA, DR? Any ideas what we could say there? It will be... It'll be that they're looking at the change in area of this circle over the change in radius, okay, over the change in radius. Why do they put a D instead of like a delta? Well, that's because that's just what their notation became, because it did stand for delta. Yeah, it did stand for delta. So change in area, which comes in, now this will come in centimetres squared. Change in radius will come in centimetres. So I just put that in because as soon as I write it, I'm saying to myself, right, if I do get asked, then I better make sure what my units will be. And it said, and what is its value? Well, it's an expression as such. It's not actually a numerical value, but it's an expression. And that's just giving you the idea that you should be finding the derivative of A as long as you have an A statement with R's on the other side. So is A, the one I've got here, is A uh, written as a function of R? And you'd say, yeah, it hasn't got T's in it. 
All right, the only variable is an R. Remember, a pi is a constant. So this question says, can you find me the derivative of my A statement? So it becomes 2 pi R, and that's its expression, that's its value. All right, so 2 pi R. That's telling me anywhere I stop, all right, anywhere I stop, as long as I know the radius when I stop, I can tell you what the dA dr will be. So the next one says, what does dA dt mean and what is its value? So first of all, let's look at dA dt. Any suggestions? Change in area. So this is a change in area. Change in area with respect to a change in time. Now here's the thing, this comes in centimetres squared and this one will come in seconds. Now that's what it represents and it says and what is its value? This is the hard part. So if you did an extension maths, this is where you picked up this little idea. Do I have an A statement on my page with it in T, with respect to T? Do I have an A statement that on the other side it says A equals and there are T's on the right hand side, have I got an A as a function of T? If I don't have an A as a function of T, then I've got to do a little manoeuvre. And it's called the chain, um, chain rule, which you've seen before when you did derivatives. So this is what happens. If you are looking for a DA, dT, and you don't have that A statement with T's on the right hand side, it means you're going to have to, first of all, break it up into two fractions. These are two fractions about to be written. I need a dA on the top and I need a dt, but I'm putting it on the other side over there. I'm putting a dt there. Now remember, the reason I have to use this is because I do not have an A statement with respect to t. I don't have an A written as a function of t, but I can get around that because... I'm allowed to, whatever happens here has to be identical to there. Now I do have an A statement and it's got what sort of variable on its other side? An R, so I can find dA dr, which is handy because I've already got that ready. And I can also, it has to be identical. Whatever you put on the bottom, you also put on the top because really you cancel those out. So you really are finding dA dt. So again, we've had to sort of push it out a bit put two fractions, put a dA on this side, put a dt on this side and find one other variable. Now we've already got a dA dr which was up here and it told us, uh, here it is right there, that's about to get used. A dr dt, we found it up here and it's hiding under there as three. So it says what does dA dt mean and what is its value? So I'm about to put two pi r multiplied by and the dr dt from above was 3, so I've got myself 6 pi r. And the units that this would come in, all right, will be centimetres per second. All right, 6 pi r, and it'll be centimetres per second. And now that you've made the link, you can now find dA dt, okay, but do you notice that the answer says 6 times pi times what your radius is? So you can find dA to t, you can find the change in the area over the change in time just by being handed a radius. That's the spot you want to freeze the story and find the value of. So it says, at what rate is the area of the puddle increasing? So the question wants, can you find me dA to t? That's what the question wants you to find. I'll put that and I'll say when r is equal to 10 centimetres. That's what the question wants, the rate, all right, that the area is increasing. So I will say, therefore, dA dt will equal, here we go, it says 6 times pi, and it says all you need to know is a radius. So the radius happens to be 10. So this comes down to 60 pi. My units for dA are centimetres squared. My units for time in this question was seconds. So I've got... When the radius of the puddle is 10 centimetres, the area is increasing at a rate of 60 times pi centimetres squared for every second, all right? Which is different to when you stop at another radius, 
okay, which is different to when you stop at another radius. Now, if you did a, a maths course of some sort, you'll know that when it got to this point, the first question that you had up the top of page 117, you were handed the quantity, which was talking about an area, and we got you to find the rate of increase of that area. So we handed you the quantity, and then you had to go and find the rate. Now when you turn the page over, the reverse is also going to be asked of you. And that says, can you determine the original function or the original quantity, I'll put up here, the original quantity, depending on what it is they're talking about, given that the rate of change is. So they're handing you the rate, but they want you to work backwards. Anyone want to think of the word that starts with I that gets you backwards? What's the I word? Integrate. So this is how we have to get through these questions. It says, if I tell you that the rate of change of velocity of an object is being denoted by V over time is given by. This is definitely a rate. They have handed me a rate. I can see it, dV to T, and they've told me it is 4T plus T squared. It then gives me a clue. Now here's where people are going to pay the price. Do you remember all those plus Cs you didn't want to write on your answers? Do you remember how you lost marks for those plus Cs? If you don't put plus Cs in these questions for all of today and for all of this week, you are going to not find the correct uh, function when you go backwards. So now those plus Cs are going to cost you. Okay? So here's what happens. They will give you another clue and you'll say, why are they handing me that? And you'll go, well, right, I'll read it if the initial velocity was 2 centimetres per second and you go, not real sure what I'll do with that yet. I'll, I'll come back to it. It says find the velocity after five. This is what happens, very standard approach. Here's what goes. It comes up as dv to t, so I'll start with dv to t, was handed to me as 4t plus t squared. What does the dv to t stand for? What does it represent? Change in velocity over the change in time. So if you go backwards, I heard you say that I word, if you go and integrate this, so I'm about to put integral of, I will do this, but I want you to be thorough and so does Dave. What's sitting on the left hand side? Right now it's blank and we don't like blank equals. What is it you are finding when you go backwards from a derivative? What is it in this question? If this stood for dv to t, then this one must be v. And this is with respect to t. Now those two details, you probably never paid attention and you could always go, I don't know why they keep hounding me about it, but it's going to be crucial to you because every single time you want to say, what is it that I'm finding? And the clue was, see how it says dV? It's that quantity right there that you are saying, oh, if I go backwards, I will find the velocity and I'm saying with respect to t's. So it has to have t's on the other side. Now, do you remember how to integrate? Round 1. 4, t to the 2 on 2, plus t to the 3 on 3, plus a good old constant. Now, you remember those c's? This is where it's going to cost you. You don't have that c, you are not going to get those extra marks in there that are hiding. Now, that's the statement. I'll tidy it up. There's a little bit of tidying. 2t squared, plus a t cubed on a 3, plus a c. I can't go any further because there's a plus C. But there is a clue. Oh, that's what those words were about. So I boxed them. So what I'm going to say is, but they gave me a clue. What's the word initial tell you about time? The word initial tells you when T equals zero. So put that in. You won't get given it. You'll get given the word initial and your job is to dig around and say, initial will always mean T equals zero. So when t equals zero, the velocity was two centimetres per second. Oh, that's great because I'm going to use those two variables, here, here and here, to unlock the c value. All right, so let's see what happens. Two is supposed to equal two times zero squared plus a zero cubed divided by three, which I've just put as zero, plus c. I've checked it, I've put it in, but zero cubed divided by three is still a zero. What's it come out to give me? Looks like c is equal to 2, so now I can come back and write that v should have equaled 2t squared plus the t cubed on the 3. That's what most people will get. 
That's what most people will get. But if you haven't unlocked the C value, you are now going to say, I'm missing that. And that's crucial because it said, find me the velocity when T was equal to 5. So here I go. I'm going to show my substitution. It says 2 times 5 squared plus 5 cubed on 3 plus 2. Now you're going to push. You're going to find an answer. I'll tell you what I got and then someone's going to check it. And the units that it comes in. It's a velocity. All right. It's a velocity. So it should be coming in centimetres per second. All right. Now anyone pushing? I've got 93 and 2 thirds. 93 and 2 thirds. So I've given it as a fraction, 93.6 repeater. Now have a look at that system, all right? Have a look at that system before we move on to the motion of a particle. The first section of using your calculus in the physical world is I can either be given the quantity and I go forwards by using a derivative or I can be given the rate and I need to find the quantity by going backwards. So what you might want to do, if you've got some space on that side there, like if you've got some space, if they give you the quantity and they ask you to find the, the quantity's rate with respect to time, then you know you'll be doing a differentiation. If you're going backwards, if they give you the rate and you need to go backwards, then the I word so integrate and I'll put a big plus C. So the plus C happens when you're travelling backwards. And if you don't have those plus C's, it's going to cost you. Plus C's should be solved with a clue that came in the question. So you've always got to say, they must have told me something to unlock that C value. Okay? That's round one. Okay? That's round one of our calculus in the physical world. So... A middle part of this, the middle part of this is going to be all of our motion of a particle. Okay, so this is us talking about a particle. So whether it be, you know, a car as Dave has put here, the term is used to represent a body. So anything at all but a body such that all applied forces acting on the body may be regarded as acting through a point. So I'm going to call it a dot more so than a car can apply to large bodies such as cars and trains and so on. So we're about to follow this dot, right? It's the car if you want to call it the car, it's the train if you want to call it a train, but our job is going to be to follow that dot, okay? The word displacement, you need to understand the difference between a displacement and a distance. So this is what it says. Displacement of an object from the origin. From the origin, okay? That doesn't mean it starts at the origin, so I'm just going to pause and say, just because you say it's from the origin, what that says is, we want to know how far it is from this flag, right? The flag happens to be at the origin, the origin is the zero mark. That doesn't mean it always has to start there. I'm just going to state that because that's the first thing most people do is think the particle always starts at the origin. It doesn't always start at the origin. We're going to find that out as we go along. So the displacement just is the position of the dot from the origin. Now if you're a positive number, then you're on the right hand side. If you're a negative number, then you're on the left hand side. So your displacement can be positive or it can be negative. All right. So you might want to jot that down as we go across. We're going to keep filling it in. But if it's positive, it's to the right. So I'll say here, if it's positive, okay, then it's to the right to the right of the origin and if it's negative if it's negative then it's to the left of the origin and it's going to be important that you know the difference because what I'll say is we're going to watch where this particular dot goes, where does it start, where does it go, where does it turn around. So you're going to be trying to trace it all the time. So positive or negative, compared to, all right, measure of the path travelled by an object. So a distance is always positive. So you might want to point out the difference to yourselves. This is always positive. And this says, I just want you to tell me what has it travelled. 
So even if it went down to the left and then it came back, I want to know the distance it travelled, which means it's only going to be a positive answer. Now he's got the little animation because he's saying that's what you'll be doing. You'll be following a dot depending on what it comes out as. So I'm going to give little diagrams like this. So the dot travelled out and came back. So the displacement is where does it stop? From the origin, there's the starting flag, sorry, there's the flag there at the origin and it says that's its displacement. What distance did it travel? Well, it actually went all the way over to the right, turned around and came back again. So the distance is much bigger, okay? So you can't just say I'll find its displacement because its displacement could be a different answer to its distance, all right? So it's things like that that are going to make a difference. Same with these two. Again, the definitions are there on page 118. It says, the velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. This can be positive and it could be negative. Okay, now there's a little table on the right-hand side, but if you can sort of see it on the right-hand side, we'll get to it, but it, it's nice and handy to talk about it now. If the velocity is positive, then it's moving right. So if you get a positive velocity then it's telling you that your particle is moving in a, in a, like, to the right. That doesn't mean it has to be starting. Wherever it is, it doesn't matter where it is, but it's travelling to the right. And if it's a negative, right, if it is a negative velocity, then it's travelling to the left. All right? And that's what it says in the table as well. Speed is just the magnitude. So speed has no direction. So speed is just a magnitude. All right, doesn't come as a positive or a negative. It comes just as a positive. So if you want to put that down as well, this is only positive because of the magnitude. Only positive. And again, it's got that same dot travelling. So first of all, it's velocity. All right, there. There's its speed, distance over time, all right? So total distance over total time. So you're going to see that the answers could be different as well. And then at the bottom it says acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Now it can be positive or negative and when we get to that table, it's quite hard to interpret but we'll try when we get over to that table. The main thing is, Okay, these are the units that you use for acceleration, so you're allowed to use either. It's just easier to write that one, so you'll tend to see this is metres per second per second. So that's actually what that represents, because you're checking how is velocity changing with respect to time. So velocity comes in metres per second, for example, and then you've said how is it changing with respect to seconds again. And that tends to be, there's three ways you can write the unit, that just tends to be the handiest way to write it. This little table is going, we're going to come back to this a lot, but it comes down to the fact that the, the notation, x, so if you travel in just x's, so I'm just telling you this because when you go towards your tutorial, you either get x, x dot, x double dot. So x is the displacement. To get to x double dot, you find a derivative to find, sorry, x dot, and then to go to x double dot, you do another derivative. So it's derivatives going in that direction. Most of us know, though, that an x dot is the first derivative, so it's actually velocity. It's okay if you put v. It is fine if you call it v. And then when you take the second derivative of x, it's again, it's an acceleration, so it's okay to put a. How about going backwards, all right? What do you think going backwards is going to involve? If this is derivatives in this direction, so if it's derivatives that get you from an x statement, a displacement statement along the path, what do you think you need to go backwards? You need integration and as soon as you write integration, what else will you put? Plus c. Plus c. Because those plus c's are going to be crucial to you. So think about one of the paths you need the plus c. Which one? The integration path. So here we go. First little exercise up the top. It's got this particle starts at the origin. So there's a clue already. I'm just going to put a rectangle around it for a moment. There is a vital clue that, ha clue that has to be sucked out of those words. Then travels at a velocity of, so I'll put another rectangle around this guy here. Determine the acceleration and the displacement of the particle. Well, that's interesting because I don't have any formulas to go with. 
after five seconds. So I'll tell you, the question wants me to find A when T equals five. It wants me to find X when T equals five. Now that's all great. I know what the question wants me to find, but I don't have any formulas to start off with. So let's go back to the clues. The velocity of 2t, that sounds like it's a, an expression, okay? 2t sounds like it's true for all of them. So velocity is equal to 2t. So v, the velocity, has come to me as a function of time. Right, so velocity is 2t, no matter where you are. But they didn't want velocity. They didn't ask me for velocity at the five second mark. They want the acceleration and they want the displacement. Now, one is easier than the other, okay? Do a derivative. That means going in this direction. Do the derivative. I'll put that arrow on this side. I tend to put it on the right-hand side when I'm doing derivatives. So derivative, that's easy. What's the derivative of 2t? And it's just a plain old 2. Is there a variable? If there's no variable, then the acceleration is exactly the same no matter what time you've been asked for. So you say, oh, so you mean that at t equals 5, the acceleration is, as it is at any place, 2, anyone go for the units? It comes in metres per second per second. So I'll make it easy and put metres with the seconds to the minus 2. Now that's the easy one out of the road. Now, to go backwards, I'll put my arrow this way. To go backwards, I have to do an integration. So here's what I know. I know that. I've set my plan up. It says, for me to find x, I will do an integration of 2t with respect to t. All right? Now, we will be looking for those dt's because it's crucial that you say, I should have a statement in t's, that's the 2t, because I'm integrating with respect to it. Can you remember how to integrate? So this is old-fashioned. So 2t squared with a 2, and I put a big plus c in there. So it looks like, and I'll simplify it a little bit, it's got the t squared plus the c. It's going to cost you if you don't remember your plus c's. How do you unlock that value of c? Oh, that's what the other clue was. So go back up to the question, even though you might not have, you, you sort of noted it, you didn't know what you were going to do with it. What does the words starts at the origin? There are two variables in there that are hiding. Starts means when t equals zero, and origin means when x equals zero, okay? When x equals zero. Now, I've put that above the clue because those words are telling me that when t is zero, x is zero. Now, I'm about to say using, now, I'm very methodical. I say to myself, this is what I'm using, so I inform people what I'm about to test. I do not just have things appear. Right? Because a lot of you will go, oh, well, C turned out to be zero. And you'll probably go, well, what was the use of that? We need to see the C value. We need to see that you have actually done the check. Because you will always go, well, if it's zero, what's the problem? But the point is, it's not always going to be zero. So if you think that, that's what most people tend to do. I won't bother trying to find C because it's probably just zero. Now, from that statement, I go back and say that x can equal t squared. I'm happy that the c is a zero, so there's no reason to write it. And the question had said, the other question had said, oh, this pen, <laughs> when t equals 5, it said find me x, which is now 5 squared, which is 25. x stands for displacement. What kind of units does this displacement come in? Have a look at the velocity. If the velocity came in metres per second, then this one must have come in metres. Okay, so we will be looking for those units in there. Time is in seconds, but I didn't have to find it. I got told it, yeah, but it would be in seconds as it was there. All right? So have a look at that. That's a really typical question where we give you the middle, which is the velocity, because from there I can either get you to do a derivative or I could get you to do an integration. Now, for Justin, I could put trig there. So see where it says V equals 2T? So suddenly, I can put anything there now. I can put the cos of 2T, and I'd ask you to do a derivative, or I'll ask you to do an integration. I could put E to the 2T. Oh, so if I do a derivative, I've got to know my exponential work, or if I do an integration, I've got to know my derivatives for that as well. 
You mean I could put the log of 2t. So now I've got so many things I could ask you. It doesn't have to be just a plain old 2t. So all the things you've been doing last week, I could now ask you in this topic. Okay? So be prepared that they're coming. First one was a nice easy one. So here's what we've got. It's got that table there. Now there's a couple of important things you might want to know. So it's just got displacement as x. It's got x dot, which is your velocity. So you can put v there if you're happier with v. And it's got acceleration as x double dot, which is also your a. Now the most important things are, if it's at the origin, then that means x is equal to 0, which is what we figured out before. If it's a positive number, we said that it will be to the right of the origin. If it's a negative number, then it's to the left of the origin, just like a number line, just like a number line. Okay, the one that has the at rest, it's going to be a crucial point and I have to keep bringing it up with you a lot. At rest means that its velocity is equal to zero. At rest means you are not moving, you have stopped. It's stationary. Stationary means, I'm going to ask you stationary points. So that's a little bit of revision from earlier in the semester. We already said if your velocity is positive, it's moving to the right. And if your velocity is negative, then it's moving to the left. All right. It can be anywhere on the number line. Right? It's just saying it's now moving to the right or it's now moving to the left. Now this bottom one is difficult to understand. So you might have a little bit stored if you did it at school. And I'm going to just add a little bit to the part that's under there with the words. It just says acceleration and it says if the acceleration is zero, right, if the acceleration is zero, that means that when we did the derivative to the velocity, it was zero which means it's a constant velocity. So for example, if the velocity was a plain old constant 5, do a derivative on a constant, what do you get? Oh, you get 0. So if your velocity was 5, a constant, all right, your acceleration is 0 because there's no change in your velocity with respect to time. So on the right it says if your acceleration is positive, now these parts here, these two definitions here get a bit tricky and the words are trying to help us at the bottom, but I'll put up another little diagram for it. If acceleration is positive, it's increasing velocity and it says if it's negative, it's a decreasing velocity. Now Dave's got some words under there, so I'll read what those words say. It says, note, initial displacement, velocity and acceleration occurs when t equals zero. So we just found that the word initial all right, is important to us because it tells us clues at when it started. Keep in mind, when t equals zero, it does not mean that it started at x equals zero. It can start anywhere on the number line, right? Don't lock in your head that it had to be at the x equals zero. The second clue, which is already written down there, or the second point says, negative solutions for t. Now, t is time. So a negative answer for t is not relevant in these questions. So you will get a, te a t answer when you're doing your equation work. You might get a t answer that's negative. It it'll be helpful for your graph, but it's not going to apply to our actual question because we know that time has to start at zero and go in all the positive numbers. It's this last one which tends to get really messy to explain. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, if you can fit it under the table, so I'm just going to get rid of that little mark there. This is the hard bit. A positive acceleration, that's this guy over here, results in increasing speed. Now the word speed has come in there if the velocity is positive or a decreasing speed if the velocity is negative. Now I'm going to put up a little diagram that I've always found handy to get me through this. So what I tend to do is say, if the velocity okay, was positive, that means it was going to the right. So this is my velocity. And if my acceleration is also positive, so it's going, I say, to the right, what that means you'll get is a speeding up. So I'll put here, this is a speeding up all right, to the right. This is a speeding up to the right. So in my mind, I think if they're both positive, it sort of makes it speed up. It gets faster in that direction. But what this also said, and I'll put it over here next to it, it says if your velocity was in fact going the other way, 
but your acceleration was positive, it was doing that, okay, then this guy here means it's actually slowing down. So this is a slowing down, a slowing down to the left. Alright, so it's travelling to the right, but it's sort of got this pull, I say, to the other way. So it's actually not speeding up, it's not gathering velocity, gathering speed, it's actually slowing itself down. And the second part of this statement from here, a negative acceleration results in, and it tells you again about this increasing speed, and it says whether it's negative velocity or a decreasing speed if velocity is positive. So I'll put the diagram that goes with it on this one as well. So these two, I'll put a little barrier there. So this one says if your velocity is negative, so it's going that way, if your acceleration is negative, all right, then what this is doing is it's speeding up to the left. That's what's happening in there. And then I'll put the other diagram says if that's going that way but acceleration is negative, it's going that way. So this one is a slowing down. It's a slowing down to the right. Remember, it's that velocity which t sort of tells you which direction it'll be as well. So those words, they do tend to really cause a problem, all right? But don't sort of think that's the only thing. It's majority is displacement velocity and we'll just get you to find the acceleration. But this is if you had to come back and analyse it a bit more. But there won't be too many questions on that. So here's what we've got. Ready to go. We've got an example at the bottom, but it's been done for you. It says the displacement of a particle in metres moving in a straight line is given by. So this is obviously the um, displacement and it's been given to me as a function of t. So that's usually what happens. x equals and then there'll be a function of t. Now I know what 2t squared plus 3 looks like if I had to ask you to draw it. So keep things like that flowing in your head. First thing says just tell me the displacement. It says tell me the displacement after 3 seconds. Now I can see that they've done the substitution. So all this is saying is Find me x if I tell you that t happens to be 3. So when you do that, substitute in. It's 21 and because it was a um, displacement, it's in metres. Can I ask just in general, where did this particle start? Where did this particle start? I know where it is after 3 seconds, but where did it start? Can anyone tell me? How would you find out where it started? I know where it is after 3 seconds, I'll say that it's at the 21 metre mark, so at the t equals 3, it pops up there, there's where my dot has turned up, but where the heck did it travel from? T equals zero. T, when t equals 0, what does your x equal? 3. So when you turn the page over, the next question says, find the distance travelled during the first three. Now, I know you've turned the page, so I want this slide still in front of you to say, well, hang on, how, did they, how are we going to approach this? I'm going to have that little diagram there and I'm going to say follow the dot, okay? So it says if the particle does not change direction, then the distance travelled will be its final displacement minus its, its initial displacement. Here's the thing. I could tell you, so Nicholas down here said that when t equals zero x equaled 3. So I think it started here, okay, at the 3 mark when t equals 0. Now most of us are going to say, did it just go straight down there or did it change direction? Because that dot is allowed to do whatever it wants. Sometimes it'll change direction and then travel back up to the 21. So what he's put in here is he says, you need to ask the question, did it change direction? Now I'm going to flip over to your question and I'm going to say, I would highlight that because your job is to say that before you jump in too fast. Did it change direction? Now, how do you know? How do you know what this dot did? So here's the thing. You can ask yourself, right, did it change direction? It's got to stop. So the question is really saying, did it come to rest? Did it come to rest? Because at rest means did it stop? Its velocity would have been zero. 
Our job is to say, answer that. Did it stop? Now, we can't just stare at it. We have to say, well, I'll figure out what V is and then I'll put it equal to zero. So your equation work is going to come back this time. So the velocity is 4t. You simply just did a derivative of 2t squared. For that to equal zero, all right, it says there, for that to equal zero, the only way that happens is at when t equals zero. So you mean it only was at rest when it started. So therefore, we've just concluded, did it change direction? Not at all, because once it started, so first of all, it was at rest, it was sitting there, then it said go, so at the t equals zero, remember we had a diagram, it was at the three mark, it said go, so it started moving to the right, and three seconds later, it was at the 21 mark, all right? So it has not changed direction, otherwise we would have found it right here. There would have been another number here, but there isn't. It's an equation with one solution. It only came to rest at the t equals zero. So there was no change of direction from the time it started to the time we wanted to look at, three seconds. So when t equals zero, we've come up with that three, which is what we did before. And up on top it said, if, uh, up on top it said, then the distance travelled would just be its final displacement minus its initial displacement. So we know that it was 21 at the three second mark. Take away its starting displacement, which was three, so it's ended up being 18 metres. So a distance comes in metres or whatever the units are for that question. So a displacement, all right, and a distance. Think about that and think about did it change direction. Now what he's also got here, he's got a big explanation about if the particle has not changed, which is what we just did, and then it says if the particle has a change, all right? So this is the not change, just like what we did a minute ago. And then it says if it does have a change, better find out, first of all, if it has a, a change of direction by finding out if it's at rest. If you find out it's at rest at more than one place, then you're going to say, right, that dot changed direction, it moved and it moved. Sometimes it can keep changing direction. We're going to get those ones later on today. So that's where we're heading. So this question, find the displacement, oh sorry, the displacement, okay, of a particle is given by. So let's get this clear. This is the x, which is displacement, and on the right it's coming to me in time. Now it hasn't been complicated, they've just said t squared minus 4t. That's all, didn't give me trig yet, didn't give me exponentials, didn't give me logs. To make it simple, it just said t squared minus 4t, which we know is quadratic. It then says determine the distance travelled. Determine the distance travelled during the first five seconds. Now if all you do is find its displacement at the five second mark, which is what most people will think of, again, you haven't checked on where it started and what it did until it got to the five second mark. So the question is you want to write up. So here we go. Did it change? Did it change? Did it change directions? And that question is was velocity ever equal to zero, which meant it was at rest. So there is our question. Was it ever at rest? How do you find velocity equal to zero? Well, first of all, you start with your x statement, which was t squared minus 4t. So x dot, which is the same as velocity, is 2t minus 4. There's my velocity statement because I did a derivative moving in that direction. And the question was, will that ever equal, oops, will that ever equal zero? So again, very simple equation first time round. So it says 2t will equal 4, t will equal 2. This is in seconds. So it turns out that this one has, a, there's a time when it is at rest. So time started at t equals 0 and it came to rest at the t equals 2 seconds. Well, we're going to have to start tracing this. So I do a simple diagram. It's like me following the dot. I figure out where it started. I figure out where it was heading, left or right. I trace it, I plot it, I go, right, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? So this is what I'm about to do. We know it came to rest only once, okay? So what I'm about to do is say, when t equals zero, okay, just by substituting it in, x was equal to zero squared, 
minus 4 times 0, which is still 0. So you mean that, I'll put my diagram down here, here is the origin. The origin is the x equals 0 spot. And in this particular case, there's the dot when we started. It was actually there. It then came to rest two seconds later. So I need to know whereabouts it came to rest. It could be on the right, it could be on the left. So the question is, I know what time it came to rest. I just want to know where it came to rest. So at t equals 2, x is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 2. This says that x will equal 4 minus 8. x is equal to minus 4. Now, there's our first displacement, which is negative. Whereabouts do you think it is? Where has it gone? Seems to have started there. Two seconds later, it's over here at the minus 4 mark. Now, I'll just put a little t equals 2 because I'm tracking it. So it started. It went moving to the left, went in that direction. It stopped because we just figured out it came to rest. And when that comes to rest, it means it will change direction. It doesn't come to rest and then just keep going in the same direction. All right? So it comes to rest, it turns itself around, and it heads back. All right? So the question is now, all right, well, if it turned around and headed back, where is it at the 5 mark? So t equals 5. Let's go and investigate the x value. So at t equals 5, I need 5 squared minus 4 times 5. That says 25 minus 20, which is a 5. So, in fact, it headed off and it's ended up there at the 5 mark. All right? It ended up at the 5 mark. So, it headed off in that direction. Now, the question said determine the distance travelled. Now, there's going to be an animation here. But in an exam for you, an, an, an animation is no good because you can't get that animation. It's going to bring this to life. But your job is to do something like that. You might have another method you might have brought with you from school, but it's about saying, where was it when it started? Did it come to rest? Where did it come to rest? Then where did it end up after five seconds? Now have a look at the distances it has travelled. How far did it travel when it went to the left? Plus, how far did it travel when it went to the right? So this is what we need. We need that the distance... Total distance will be, when it went to the left, I'm putting the absolute value of minus 4 because the distance is a positive number. And then I'll say plus, what was the distance it travelled in the right? Now there's a 4 and a 5, can you see that? Can you see it travelled 9? So 1 is the distance it went to the left, plus, and then it's the distance it went to the right. We've got ourselves a 4 and a 9, which is a 13 metres which is a 13 metres, okay? How are we looking? All right with that? So, there's going to be an animation, and as I said, the animation is lovely. I think it's this one that comes up. So this is us with all of the... Might have to pause because I don't know why it's not... Uh, why isn't it flipping through... that want to flip through. Mm. Won't let me escape, won't let me do anything. Might be time for a pause. I didn't want to pause right now. Ah, all right, take a quick break, guys, and it's going to be a very quick break. Anyone want to come and suggest what I might do to get my PowerPoint tablet back. I think that's come back, but I don't know why it left me. Nicholas, do you want, so I'll say, I'll take that out, because I don't really want that, as long as it's moving. Why doesn't it want to move? Any suggestions, Nicholas? I feel like it's just gone into a memory issue. So, uh, do you want to exit tablet mode? I say yes, because that way. Hmm. Yes, that it's just not responding. No, it's not responding. Try. 
Do you want to keep them or say, yeah, we'll keep them? Oh. All right, so we want to come down to... Um, where about there? It's probably just the... It was trying to load the animation. Oh, it had a hard time. This one. Okay, we want to exit this one. This is the one we don't want. Because what happens is... It doesn't like being flipped. It does that other strange mode we decided with Dave. We don't want that strange mode. We want to now... Oh, it's plugged in. Because when I do this, it better not give me that other mode. Yeah, it does that to me. So what I'll do is... I'll just take that out for a second. Because we, we don't like that mode. So we discovered that if we do that... Okay, that's coming back to us. That's all there. Yep, so I'll leave it there. It doesn't like this being plugged in. It changes our mode. It doesn't like... Swapping it to like a presentation. Yeah, mode. that's what it does if we plug it in first. Yeah, there's the dot. That's what we want. So um, I'll, I'll go it's back. It's not showing that on the... Oh, because I just... Did I mute it? I don't think I... Oh, because I plugged it out and it maybe went back. Why is it doing that? It's showing... Hmm, it's showing something, isn't it? Oh, it's showing the desktop. Yeah, which is not what we're looking at. I don't know. It didn't, it didn't do anything different. Any suggestions? <laughs> no, that's right, Nick. Because you can have a rest. It's all right. If anything, we'll just. Come on, what's the matter? <laughs> hey, Justin, what's the chance you can? Do you have Dave? You know, on your Facebook. Um, yeah, just say for the somewhere. The back yeah, the keyboard back in. I could go with keyboard only. I can't remember if he's on break or not now. So when it does that, we should be back in. It normally says, do I want to get out of? See, that's not doing anything, is it? If I go to... It's just completely ignoring what we had. And that's not even, is that? You see, that's got an arrow, but we can't even see the arrow. <laughs> can I? Yeah, but we're here. Can I? No. no. Yeah, tell him, yeah. And it's not my fault. Hang on. Can he? You're my helpline. Just straight up not. Is that coming up? It just doesn't want to do it. It's just not complying. It's not complying. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> I did not do anything, Dave. It's my plead. problem is that same, but I might close it and open it again, I think.
It's chucking a hizzy fit. Dave's about to come, but I don't know if he's going to be able to fix it either. Not what we need today. And you're not prepared to go all the time? I will be. <laughs> I'll give him one chance to fix it, but I don't think... It's, uh, so that looks like what you think my tablet's got, but my tablet's got this. So it, won't, it refuses to show what was there. So I don't know why. Nicholas, back me on this one. Hit me with a bag. <laughs> don't hit me with a bag. It just suddenly decided, we're travelling along fine. It decides now not to show me this anymore. That mm. thinks what the, um, the desktop, it's showing me a desktop, but it's not what we've got. And it's like. not that? And so we tried, no, it's not that because I've even turned that one on. Yeah, okay. And we don't know why. It knew we wanted a break, but it just... But why is it all... Yeah. So we've, I turned it off and on again. I did, I closed the file and came back on again. I will go old school, Jack. I did, yeah. Yeah. And normally Nicholas normally tried a few things. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, okay. Um, we didn't, we were just, just travelling along and then it just wouldn't go to the next slide. So, yeah, okay. so I tried, I closed the PowerPoint and opened it again. What about the system? Well, I didn't do the system. Because maybe it's... Maybe the system? Yeah, I'd say that's going to be the only way out of this. Because if it's just not sending... It's got something up there though. It's sending something that we don't... Yeah, it is. Um... Why won't it show me the... I don't know. Oh, the Is mouse. It? Have we got the mouse? Yeah, that's in the thing, yeah. Otherwise, I'll just go old school, Jacqueline. I'll, I can't wait to go old school. Now yeah, it's output. That's there. Okay, that's fine. And then screen... Um, that now that's all. Display settings. Ooh. And then you want back to um No, it's hidden yeah, okay. Okay, now that's we want there. that back off the uh that's stupid setting, more slideshow options. Yeah, that's because we plugged in, you know how I got around mm. that business. Mm. But see, that's showing it as that, up there. Show hiding markup, yeah, that's all good. So that's great, but how do we get out of... Um, okay, and it's going back out of that. So it can be done it's if you stay in that mode. So if I go Unless that's here. okay. Yeah, so that's coming up. Oh, yeah, so as long as I can get the next. Yeah. Yeah, that what they can see, but I'll be limited in my um, writing space. But that doesn't matter. Yeah, but how, do you, how is the other way? Is that one up there that I was going oh, to? Oh, maybe just play it. Oh, you're, yeah, that's... Oh, sorry. We're, we're, com we're fighting. We're fighting, sorry. Yeah, uh, swap is in a... No, other one. Yeah, because yeah, that's just the direct swap. We don't want the presentation mode at all. Um, let's no, hide that for a sec. That's all right. And then on this one... I'll go back to duplicate. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And I we can scroll dot. back. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All I good. don't know why. Mm. Thanks for our helpline. Mm. Justin just wanted to talk to you. I wanted to talk to Justin. <laughs> Hi, Justin. Hello. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. Done. Um, Thanks. <laughs> That's another chocolate cake. <laughs> all right, we're back again, guys. Here's the dot, all right? So I was about to say to you, the graphic comes up, but when you're in an exam, you don't have the animation, but here it comes. It starts there at zero, and it's just going to be, we do this manually. So what we've drawn over there to the right, the dot goes down, the dot goes back up, and it stops at the five. So it's about figuring out where the dot started, where it goes to, where's it at rest, and then where's it end up at. So here we go, round two. Let's all hope, fingers crossed, otherwise we're in old mode, okay? It says that we've got that the displacement of a particle, okay, moving. Here is our X. 
So basically you want to figure out the distance. Your job is to say, will velocity ever equal zero? Is it ever at rest is the question. So how do you do that? Now it's back to your equation work. So we go. If you want to find a velocity, it's going to be 6t squared minus 6t. 6t squared minus 6t minus 12. Now here's your equation work. This is what's not supposed to take you very long, but it is taking people a long time. If you want to see that equal to zero, then your job is to solve this. I'm going to make life easier by dividing by 6, which is what I'm allowed to do because it's an equation. When I've divided it by 6, I'm about to go and factorise it. So here is the rest of my factorising, old stuff. There's a 2 and a 1 on my page. There's a 2 and a 1. The 2 is negative and the 1 is positive. Now I've got myself two answers. One of them is minus 1, which I know for this particular problem is not going to be considered, so not a solution, not for what we're investigating. Or, and it says t is equal to 2, which is the one we want to investigate. So I'm just saying I'm aware that it's a negative number, but in our case we don't really want to pay attention to it. So here's the thing. We're going to do that follow the dot again. So I can see that. Here's my diagram. I'll get it started down here. So I'll say when t equals 0, find out where it was. So do me a job. When t equals 2, which is the at rest, I want to know where it became where it was when it did the at rest, so I'll say find the x. And then when we came to the end of the first four seconds, I want to know whereabouts it is. So it's very much where did it start, where did it come to rest, and then whereabouts did it end up at the four second mark. So here we go. When t equals 0, plugging that in, you get x equals 8. So here's the origin, just to give you a bit of a marker. It did not start at the marker, it started at the positive 8, so it started to the right of the origin. So here is our t equals 0, I'll just put a little starter there. It then went to t equals 2, I, got, I have to substitute, now I would normally show all my substitution, I'll put 2 times 8 minus 3 times 4 minus 12 times 2 with a plus 8, and you can check it later but I get a minus 12. Now, minus 12 means it travelled because the next time when it came to stop here at the t equals 2 mark, it was at the minus 12, which means it was to the left of the origin. So then it stopped. I know that. It came to rest, so it's about to change. It's about where will it end up, though. I know it goes back to the right. I just have to check whereabouts it stops. So it turns out that when I put 4 in, again, I will go and show 2 times 4 cubed, 2 times 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared minus 12 times 4 plus 8. I always write my substitution down. I then let my calculator do the hard ones for me. It turns out that the answer is a 40. So this is going to the right and when it stops, it's all the way up here, a bit not to scale but don't worry about that, up here at the 40 and this is the 4 second mark. So it travelled down in that direction and then it travelled to the right in that direction. The question had said what was its total distance. So what can you tell me about the distance? The distance of this will be, started at 8, for it to get down to minus 12 it went 8 plus another 12. So when it went down to the left it had already travelled 20 going down to the left. When it went back to the right, it's at minus 12 and it's got to end up at a positive 40. So you find yourself with a 52 going to the right. They're both positive numbers. So you end up with a 72 all right, metres. That's the total distance that that dot has ended up travelling. All right. Now they're the things. That little drawing down there is going to be crucial to you because you really need to understand where it is and where is it going, all right? So something like that. Now I think I'll, I will fill this in. This is an extra, um, the next one's a, an example that Dave put in, but it's going to take quite a bit of time. So what I'll end up doing on this next one, I'll tell you about it. And what I'll point out to you, this becomes a lot harder because have a look at what the displacement has come to you as. Would anyone like to comment? When you go to do a derivative on that function, 
What do you now have to see is coming your way? Product rule. So see the function? It's got a t and then it says times by an e to the minus t. Now that straight away says caution. This is going to need a product rule because I'm about to get asked for its velocity, which means its first derivative, and then another hard job in its acceleration. Now, I will finish that off. I won't put it there because it's got quite a lot of working with a lot of um, algebra, a lot of um, calculus, sorry. So just keep in mind, we did a simpler one. This one's going to take a while, so I'll get it up and then I'll put the PowerPoint on there. Flip the page over. We've got a couple of diagrams we're going to be investigating. Now, diagrams are helpful, all right, because it's about you remembering back to when you did graphs and it's about saying, if I give you, now I want you to circle this and say, pay attention to what the graph starts as. You are not always given a displacement graph, but this one is a displacement graph. So you want to put that in words, by all means put that in. This is a displacement graph. And then a question says, it wants you to describe the velocity and the acceleration if I've given you that particular displacement. Okay? So, first derivative. How would you describe the first derivative, which is called the gradient, of what I'm staring at? How would you describe the gradient of a line? Does it change? Is it the same? Constant? All straight lines have a gradient. Do, does it change as you go along? No. So it's y equals mx plus b. The value of m doesn't change. It's a constant. Can you tell me, is this a positive constant or a negative constant? Positive constant. So what that means is you don't have a number, but you just say it's a constant, so it's going like that. Some number. All right, just getting your brains thinking about what it would look like. It's a constant. Now, what's the derivative of that one? Because notice this is a V graph and now I'm moving to an A. I'm moving to an acceleration. What's the derivative of that horizontal line? Derivative of a constant. What's the derivative of 5, which is constant? Zero. Any constant number at all. So where is the graph? It's actually just all on the bottom. Okay? The acceleration is zero for the whole time. Now, I'll fill the rest of those in, but what you want to say is exactly that. You are asking yourself, all four of them, there are four that have been drawn, they all start with, so here's the second one, I want you to say this is starting with displacement, and again, it wants you to talk about the gradient, which means the velocity. Once you've got the velocity, you do the acceleration. Now, it does it four times, all right, so it's asking you to start investigating that. I'll finish that off and I'll put them up on the notes. On the right-hand side, it's just making you aware the very first diagram we did, if you get your three fingers and you put your three fingers on the displacement, the velocity and the acceleration, put your fingers sort of like that and say, if the displacement is linear, which is what this is, so my finger is on this, this is my displacement, my three fingers are there, so my displacement is linear, my velocity is horizontal, and my acceleration is a zero. Now move your three fingers down, all right, slide them down. So your first finger at the bottom is on the parabola. So when your finger starts on the parabola, the, your second finger is on the graph above and your third finger is on the horizontal line. So this is what it's saying. If you start with the parabola as your displacement, then when you take the derivative of that, you're looking at a parabola. Down this side, the gradient is negative because the tangent is heading down. It gets to zero and then it goes positive. Have a look at the graph that your second finger is on. Your second finger should be on that linear, okay? It should be on the linear graph. And then what's the derivative of the linear? It's a horizontal up the top. Slide your finger down again so that your bottom finger is on the x cubed. So here I go again. My bottom finger is now on the x cubed. If your displacement starts as a cubic, for example, then what can you say about the derivative? Have a look. The tangent here is positive, but it's getting steeper. The tangent here is zero. The tangent is still positive, but it's getting less. All right? 
So what's happening here is, oh sorry, it's getting higher in that section there. So it's all positive. Can you see your velocity is a parabola but it's all positive? So it's all above the t-axis and then your acceleration is the derivative of your parabola. One more, slide your bottom finger down to the y equals x to the 4. If your y equals x to the 4, that finger, then your velocity is cubic because on this side, same sort of thing, this is negative going down here. This is a zero and then this is positive. So that's why the velocity is part below and part above. And then again, your top finger would be your acceleration. So you can use your three fingers like that. You slide it. So this one is where you start with your displacement. This one will land on what your velocity should look like. And the top one should be your acceleration. Now you're going to get asked to draw that. Given one, draw the others. Okay? So that's just a quick idea about what that is there. Total distance, this is crucial guys, this is part of us using our calculus. It says on top of page 123, total distance compared to, all right, the area under a velocity graph. So what it's making you realise is that if you've got a velocity graph, okay, velocity is total distance over total time, and it says that would be delta or change in x over change in t, so total distance can be found by doing a velocity times by the total time, okay? Now, distance may be found by... Now think about how we found the distance before. We found the distance, we got away with finding the distance by plotting that point. But we could only plot that point, that little diagram we did where we plotted it, we can only plot it if you know the displacement function. So if you don't get given an x equals function, you can't do that, find where the dot is going. So this is saying they may end up giving you a velocity statement. A velocity statement is different to an x statement, to a displacement statement. You can't play follow the dot anymore. So what this is saying is if you've been given a velocity, whether it's the graph of the velocity or you've got the velocity function, what you need to do is find the area that is under your graph. Now this is you coming back to all the graphs you know because you're about to get asked to find the area under those graphs. So round one, you can see there says, the velocity of a particle is given by, this is a velocity statement. I always pause to check what they've handed me. I cannot play follow the dot because I don't have a displacement. It's not an x equals. I can't find the x statement because they haven't given me enough clues like I did at the very start. I can't go and say, well, why don't I integrate it? There'll be a plus c hanging about and that plus c cannot be unlocked because there's no other clues on them. So the only way I'm going to do this is sketch that function and figure out where it was, what's happening, not where it was, but what's happening to its velocity because all I really need is its... Um, its area under the graph, okay? So here's what we've got. So we need um, x to integrate, but we can't do that. So instead, notice, I want you to circle because we're about to sketch the function. So we're about to sketch a velocity function. Now, velocity, right, is equal to 2t minus 4. Does that sound linear? Does it sound quadratic? Does it sound like any other family of graphs you've ever come across? Which one does it come out as? It's linear. Linear means I've recognised it as a y equals mx plus b. Now, obviously, it doesn't have the x's and all that sort of thing, but it's asking you to graph a straight line. Tell me whereabouts is it's what we would call its y-intercept. Where does it start? Minus 4. Remember, we don't really want the graph on the other side because we we're not interested in negative time. What kind of gradient has it got? Where does it cross the t-axis? is another way of saying it. Where does it cross the t-axis? So when the t-intercept, uh, I'm checking out the t-intercept. To do that, I put when v is equal to 0. So 0 equals 2t minus 4. 4 is equal to 2t. t is equal to 2. So I'm going to put a dot there. All right. Now I need to stop after 5. So if you want a better position, we better go and say... When t equals 5, the velocity is 2 times 5 minus 4. I think that comes out to be 6. 
so I need a dot up there. Now you'll do it better than me. Join those dots up, you should have a straight line. So I'll do the best I can freehand like that. Question says, tell me, all right, the distance travelled. So the distance travelled when I don't have an, a, a displacement function that I can play follow the dot. The displacement function, don't have it, so I, I have to resort to the area under the curve. Guess what? This one's not so bad. What shapes are they? Triangles. There's quite an easy way to do the area under this. I wouldn't bother with an integral, but you can do it. So you could go and find the integral, but what would you have to be aware of? You'd have to do the integral for the 0 to 2 plus the integral from the 2 to 5. So you could do this as an integral from 0 to 2 plus an integral from 2 to 5. But I'm choosing not to because I can see the shapes are triangles. So why don't I just do the area of the triangle? So here I go. Can you tell me half the base times the height for the bottom one? Plus, can you tell me half the base times the height for the top one? So I've put all the clues in there. Bottom triangle, half of 2 times a positive 4 because we don't have negatives when we're talking about the height of the triangle. Plus, and then the top guy, what's its uh, base and its height? Half of, and I'll go with 3 times by 6. Now I've got 3 because from 2 to 5 is a distance of 3 and it went up 6. Push that straight into the calculator. So it comes out to give me a 4 and a 9, which is a 13, and it was a total distance. Now I will put here total distance travelled. Total distance. Total distance was 13. Now, what did I have to rely upon? Can I graph a straight line? Do I understand that there's a bit below and a bit above? Now, that was a nice easy one because they came out to be triangles. Justin? How do you know it ends at 6? How do you know it ends at 6? Because it said during the first 5 seconds. Good question. When it said you've got to know where to stop because otherwise the area would just keep growing and growing. So round two, this one gets slightly harder. So again, I'll set it up, but I'll probably finish it for you later on. So here's what it comes up with. All right, so it comes out to be this guy here. You guys have got on page 123. I'm going to do the setup because it's the setup that is what's costing people. So it says the velocity of this particle is given by. So this is a velocity statement. I cannot play follow the dot game because it's not a displacement being handed to me. Because I don't have the displacement, it's a good idea to sketch the function. There's the hint. You've got to sketch the function so that then you can find the area under the curve. And this time, Justin, it wants it in the first four seconds. So I need the graph as far as four. Okay? So here's what we've got. This is one I can never remember. This is the one where I want to write on it. So I'm going to do a quick sketch. What kind of diagram? Is it linear? No. What kind is it? It's a parabola. Happy or sad? Happy. Now, the problem with this is I've got to find some roots. I've got to see whereabouts it crosses. So here's the thing. Whenever you did that, you want to put when v is equal to zero, you are now solving a quadratic equation. How good are you at factorising? Threes and ones, minus and minus. It looks like I'm getting two answers at t equals one and at t equals three. This is a parabola that used to look like this. It used to come through here, all right? Then it's going to come here and here. So it goes down and up like that. Why have I got the dotted line? Because t's negative isn't crucial to us. So it's there, but I don't need it on that side. Now, how do I know my diagram should be up there? When t equals zero, I'll do a quick check. When t equals zero, what was its velocity? Three, so it should have been having that. These are the things we used to call the y and the x-intercepts. They're the things we tried to make sure you all understood because you needed to perfect them. Now, I know that it crossed here at one. I know it crossed at three. But the question wanted the first four seconds. So I need to understand that it's going to get stopped right about here. And I need to understand the area under the graph is made up of a lot of bits. There's a lot of bits. Now, why can't I use triangles like I did the first time? Because 
It's a parabola you drew. It's not triangles that are coming out of that. Even though you might think that looks like a triangle, they're curved, so it's a parabola. Remind yourself, that's why I wrote it up the top. These are not triangles. Now, the total distance travelled in the first four seconds is all of that area put together. Now, I'm about to start it up by saying that the total distance, so I'll put here total distance, and I'm going to go all the way across because it says the top first one is positive from 0 to 1 is positive because it's above and it's the uh, function t squared minus 4t plus 3 to t. That's the first one. Then I'll put a big plus. The second one is negative. What do we need around that then? Anyone remember when it's negative you need? Absolute values. So I know that's coming, so I'll put absolute values of the integral from 1 to 3. Again, it's the same function, so I put the same thing there to t, and I'll close my absolute value, plus, then I've got to do the one that's above again. Now you can see why this is so time consuming, but the last one I'll set up is a 3 to a 4, goes t squared minus 4t plus 3, I'll put the to t. Now you could say, can I just put the absolute values around everything? You're most welcome to. But the only one that really needs it is the one from 1 to 3. Now I'm going to sort of pause on that. I will tell you that the answer, so that if you want to go home, the answer at the end is total distance is 4. Okay? And I'll remind you that you could not do the follow the dot. You can't play the game, let's follow the dot, because it hasn't given you a displacement function. So there's the difference. Righto, so here we go. I'll complete all that, but that's just old style integration. And I'll give you the answers for, so please check that it does come out to be four. Now the idea of simple harmonic, anyone that did extension maths will have that, oh, shivers probably, because simple harmonic motion was in that particular course and it was quite hard. We don't dive into that. All we're about to say is that a simple harmonic motion is when it keeps oscillating. It keeps bouncing, stopping and turning and stopping and turning and stopping and turning and it keeps moving itself around. Now what we know though is for example the first one, this is what you've got on page 124, it says that here is the displacement. So I want you to point to this again. Now there's a couple of ideas that are good for your revision. What kind of graph does that look like? Here's a bit of revision coming your way. What kind of graph? Sine graph. Very nice. That's a sine graph. Now listen carefully to my question. I want the derivative of sine. I want derivative of sine because I need to draw it on the next one. What's a derivative of sine? Get those brains. I know you want resource sheets, but your brain's there for some reason. It's negative cos. So draw me a negative cos. What's a negative cos look like? Well, normal cos starts up high. This time it's going to start down low at the minus 1. So what does it do? Think about what it does. It'll get to there. I know, it'll hit a high and then it'll get to there. So I'm about to draw. Just by freehand, something that looks like that. Is that looking like a minus cos graph? Let's have a look if we got all the main spots. See where the displacement came to rest? That's a stationary point. Is it zero on the velocity graph? So this place is looking good. There's another stationary point there. That means that my velocity should be zero. Yep, does indeed, up on top of the other one. It went through that number there. Is this about right there, although you think not much of that, that's actually called a point of inflection. It's changed its concavity. And when it changed its concavity, what it actually did, it hit its maximum velocity. Have a look at the diagram. It hit its maximum velocity at that point of inflection. So this was the sine graph. This was minus the cos graph. Are you ready? What's the derivative of a minus cos? What's the derivative of a minus cos? What's the derivative of a cos? And stick a minus 1 in front of it negative sign. So what am I going to draw? Well, what looks like the blue picture but the negative of it. So here I go. What looks like the blue but the negative of it does a bit of that because this would have come out to be minus sign. 
Okay. Now again, you can check wherever there was a stationary point on the velocity, it should have given you a zero spot there. Okay. So all those things should agree along the way. And we're about to remind ourselves about this because it says in the bottom example, it's going to give me an x equals and now life suddenly got a little bit harder because it said particle moves in a straight line, okay, it's distance x, all right, it's displacement I think I might have to tell Dave that should be, x is equal to 2, uh, sorry, x is equal to sine of 2t plus 3. This is a displacement but this time the function suddenly got harder, okay. Sketch the graph of the displacement, are you ready? I've got to sketch that trig. So here's a bit of a, a bit of revision because you might need this as well for the quiz coming up this week. Think about a sine graph, think about the amplitude, think about the period and what has the plus 3 done? Are we ready? What's the amplitude of this diagram? Amplitude is positive 1. What's the period of this? The period is 2 pi divided by n. What's the n value in this question? 2. So the period is pi. Now I've been marking some papers, you know, because I felt like sort of bringing a smile to my face, but it didn't bring a smile to my face when people didn't get their periods right in last week's test. Do you remember last week's test? You don't want to remember it, I'm sure. I don't know, Rebecca. I didn't mark yours. But on my pieces of paper, lots of people did not remember how to find the period and if they did find it, they didn't actually understand what it means. This means it's going to take a distance of pi to get a complete cycle in. Okay? What does the plus 3 do to my diagram? Up. Now most people figured that out. Now here I go. This is freehand, which means it'll be a little bit wonky. It's gone up 3. So let me just put this along here as a bit of a, I need a guide to stick to. The amplitude was 1, so it should hit a high of 4 and it should hit a low of 2. It's a sine graph, so the first thing I do, sine graphs go like this. By the time I finish 1, that's supposed to be pi. It wants me to draw it to 2 pi, so I get another whole diagram in, up and down. By the time I finish my second one, I've got to 2 pi. This is t, this is my displacement, this is the number 4 as high as, this is the number 2. Have I got enough information on there? Alright? Now that's what you're meant to do when you do those diagrams, okay? This was a trig diagram. Again, a little bit of revision for you. The question wanted me to sketch it, so I've come up with my sketch. The question also says, when is the particle, a bit of a typo, it's been fixed up on the slides but your, yours has, has an extra word. When is the particle at rest? So just get rid of that is. Particle at rest. Particle at rest normally means when V is equal to zero. But I don't have a V graph. What kind of graph do I have in front of me? I have a displacement graph. So where can I see, with my eyes, where can I see the velocity equals zero? It wants the first derivative to equal zero. Oh, you mean you're looking for the stationary points. Can you see the stationary points with your eyes? I can see one here, can see one here, I can see one here, and I can see, I can see four. So there are four places in this zone that it's come to rest. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to say, then this was pi on two, so this one here was a pi on 4. So I've got when t is equal to pi on 4. Then I take a bit of a guess to that one. It's between a half and 1, so it's 3 pi on 4. Then I go again. This one here would have been 1 and a half, otherwise known as 3 pi on 2. So the next one is, anyone take a guess? 5 pi on 4. And the last one will be 7 pi on 4. So what I'm doing is I'm just going back and because I know it's all very symmetrical then I can be able to place them all in there. But I'll, I, I would normally be able to draw a bit better than that. So place all those numbers in there. So now you know when it came to rest 
And the question says, and what is the position of the particle? So what is the position? Wants to know its displacement at all four of those times. So what can you tell me? When t equals pi on 4, the displacement was? Have a look at your beautiful graph. What's it get as high as? 4. At the next one, when t equals 3 pi on 4, where is it? It's at 2. It's at the lowest point. Then where is it again? 4. Then where is it again? Now I've made sure that I answered the question which was for every single one of the times I said what is the position okay, of the particle at those points. I didn't just say a 2 and a 4 and make them figure it out. I said at this time it's 4. Now they should have units on there so they should all be in metres. So 4 metres, 4 metres, 2 metres. These all should be in seconds, seconds, seconds and seconds. All right. So here's what we've got, guys. The next page, all I'll do is just remind you about how you go forwards by differentiating, backwards by integrating. It's then got an example, it's got a question, sorry, at the, oh, it's done it to me again, I'd say. We're going old school. We're going to go old school, guys. Here's what we'll do. All right, don't know, haven't got time, won't play with me, so doesn't want to respond. Not sure why, but I'm giving up on that one. Go back over to this one. How's my, um, what's it zooming in like? Come in here. Now, I've already written answers in here, guys, but I need you to come up with just a couple of things there, which is, See how it says given the graph of the velocity. Can you put the word determine a possible graph? Because there's no numbers on this. So when you come up with a graph, there's nothing set. It's about the shape of it. Not so much where it sits, but the shape of it. So when I went to do this question, I got given a velocity. Can you highlight that it's a velocity that someone has given you? So you are starting with a velocity and someone says, I want a displacement and I want an acceleration. Well, I would tend to do the first one. The first one, I wouldn't necessarily do those in order. I tend to say that the acceleration comes out easier because the acceleration is the first derivative of velocity. So it's the uh, derivative of this graph. So if you look at the derivative of this graph and you say, well, it's got a stationary point there. So at the T2 mark, I'm supposed to be at a, an acceleration of zero. So that's why it's got a dot there. Oh no, that's why it's got a dot there. And then, flip that over a bit so you can push it up a bit. And then it says, on this side the derivative was positive all the time, so the tangent on this side was positive. So all these numbers have to be positive. So it's not about, I don't know the number it starts at, but it's all positive until it gets to that, and then it's all negative below it. So I drew a line. All right, a straight line that just went through the t that mark. The main part is the T2 has to be at zero. Okay, so the T2 has to be at zero. Now, I tend to find that one easier because when you have to work backwards, when you have to get a displacement, this says possible, doesn't have to be sitting in that spot, but it has to look like that, and I, I could just imagine sliding it up or down. So how did I get this? Well, up on this one, this is a velocity diagram. The velocity is zero at T1. That means it's a stationary point. So what I've written there is it says, oh, if your velocity is zero, that's because it's on that axis. Velocity is zero, it's got a stationary point. There's another place it's got a stationary point, right there. So that means my original curve should have some sort of stationary point at the T1 mark some sort of stationary point at the T2 mark, but I don't know yet what kind. So over on the side, I did myself a table. And what I asked was, when I was at the T1, I know it's a stationary point, so I put T1 and I put zero. Before I got to it, what was the velocity? The velocity was under the graph, so it was negative. What was the velocity doing after? It was positive. So that means that you should have got yourself a minimum. 
So it doesn't matter where this minimum is drawn as long as it's on that dotted T1 somewhere. So I just drew it down here. It can be anywhere on that track as long as you draw me a minimum on that track somewhere. So as long as it's a minimum and it's on that track. And the same with this side here. I found that T3, there was a, a stationary point. I checked before. The velocity was above because it's positive, so it's above there. And then the velocity was below, so it was negative. So it must have given me a max. So this one here becomes a max. Again, somewhere on that track you need to give me a max. Now, it can be anywhere, all right? It can be anywhere. You just slide the diagram up or down. I'm going to join it up. It doesn't matter about where else it touches. It's mainly that there is a minimum there. So I'll draw you another one, okay, with a green texture. As long as there is a minimum there and a maximum there, it can look like that. The shape of it will look the same, all right? The shape of it will keep looking the same. All right, so I tend to do my acceleration. A derivative tends to be easier to investigate, all right? Now, again, if you miss any of this now that we're doing old school, you'll just find it on the recording, okay? Now, I won't go through that example, which takes up all this, because all this is saying is it's going to say, I'll give you an acceleration. So, here is the acceleration statement. So, if someone gives me an acceleration, can you see this side? This is my working, guys. This is what I do. I remind myself that. Someone gives me an acceleration, I can go back to a velocity by integrating and I can go back to a displacement by integrating. What else will I put on that integrating? I'll put a plus C. So it looks like someone's handed me the acceleration and I've got to go backwards. So every time you go backwards, all right, you do an integration, you see this C1? It's called C1 because it's the first of our constants, all right? So it just says, look, there's about to be another one, so I'll just call this C1. You don't have to, you can just call it C. But once you've got this statement here, you did the integration, you got V equal, there it is there, you still have to unlock this C1 statement, okay? Now that means there must have been a clue in the question. So let's go back. Can you find me a clue that's got a V and a T involved in it? So when I go back to the beginning, it says... A particle moves along the x-axis with an acceleration given by this. Initially, the particle was at. Also initially, the velocity was. So that's telling me that initially, the um, particle was here. Initially, the velocity was 2. So that, those words there gave me two clues. Initially, it was here. Initially, it was driving at a velocity of 2 metres per second. Now, one of those clues helps me the first time. I need a V and a T, so it's going to be this one that helps me find C1. That C1 has to go back in. I've got a couple of ticks there because it says you can't go forward or backward, you can't go and integrate the second time if you've still got a constant there. So you, you should, you're supposed to say, if I've still got a C on that page, don't go anywhere until you find it. To go from velocity back to displacement, Again, you integrate. Integrating, again, goes through the steps. It gives you another constant. So they've called it C2. You can just call it C. It doesn't matter. But there must be another clue to unlock that one. So have you got another clue that's got X's and T's? Yeah, I do. That's this one here. X and T. That's that clue. So I substitute it in. I find this and I come up with my second constant. Now, that is the actual displacement, and the question said, find me the position after five seconds. Now, that part's the easy part. Once you've got a displacement formula in front of you, you just substitute. Now, again, the next part that's about to come against us here, thrown at us, comes back to your stationary uh, point work. Go back to about week one or two, we did stationary points. And we got asked for maximum values and minimum values. Now, we had a hard time with that. It's not asking you for a maximum point. It's asking you, in this particular domain, what was the maximum Y value? And we didn't like that at all. People did not like it. They didn't get it right. That's all this bottom section is. It's just telling you you're going to treat it the same way, or better, I hope, than what you did in week one and week two, 
which was when someone wants you to find a maximum displacement, they're asking you to find the graph and in that domain find what was the maximum, and I'll say the maximum y value, that's what we used to find. Now we're finding the maximum displacement. So here's what I've got. See the displacement formula got given to me. X equals, and it says 6t squared minus t cubed. If you had to draw that, what kind of graph have I got? A straight line? No. Parabola? No. Have I got a cubic? Mm -hmm. Is it positive or negative? negative? It's negative. So this is a cubic and it's negative. Do you remember my disco dancing? Cubic negatives dance from here to here. Now all my work on this side is me finding out what this looks like. So what does this look like? And you might say, do I have to draw the whole thing? Your job is to find out what kind of shape it is. As soon as I hear it's cubic, it's potentially got turning points. So you need to find where those turning points are. So you mean I've got to take my original and I've got to find the derivative, right? So what we're doing here is I'm sketching the original by just doing old-fashioned sketching techniques, which is I found, I factorised this, I got it's going to cross the x-axis at 0 and 6, so it's crossing the x-axis at 0 and 6. Right up. I'll fix this up. I'll put this on those slides. Okay, so when you get the slide as a file, these will all be completed over there. All right. So I found where it crosses, but the next thing I did was its first derivative. And its first derivative is its velocity, so I did a derivative and I got 12t minus 3t squared. I wanted to know where its first derivative was equal to zero. So again, I solved it by factorising it and I got, there are two stationary points. One is at the zero and one is at the four. Now I didn't do any more testing because I knew that it was a cubic and I knew what kind of dancing it was doing. So all I did was I came in at that angle. I knew this had to be the minimum. I knew this had to be the maximum and I drew that. Righto. So there's my diagram for displacement. Now from that diagram, your job is, you're going to be restricted from 0 to 4. So see from 0 to 4, you need to tell me what the highest answer was on this axis. It's the displacement axis. So you need to know how high that point was. How do you find it? Well, we know when it happens, and then I substituted it to get its value in there. What would it be its maximum displacement if you were only restricted from the 0 to the 4 domain? And you would say the maximum would be? Now I've put 32 and I've also said 32 metres to the right because we like to say in your answer make a reference to the direction of the original value. Okay, make a reference okay, to the direction. It then says make your domain go from 0 to 6 so instead of being looking just at 0 to 6, you now look at zero, sorry, 0 to 4, you now go to 0 to 6. If you only look at the y values, you're going to say 0 and 0. There was no displacement. But during those 6 seconds, it went somewhere and it came back. So its maximum, again, I'll point to this axis, its maximum value was 32. So I put here, it's also 32 metres for that answer there. And then it says widen the domain again. So it says from 0 to 8. So if you widen the domain again, your job is to say, where does it end up when it's at the 8? And I did my calculations and I got minus 128 down there. So when you look at it, it's not saying a maximum point. It's saying, all right, what was its maximum displacement? And what you have to do is say, yeah, this is negative. Right, this is negative, it's moved in the other direction, but it's a, it's a maximum displacement because it went to the left. So it's going to have a maximum displacement of 128. So you've got to think about those positives and those negative numbers, all right, and you want to know this would be its actual maximum. So I put here the absolute value of minus 128. Now, I'm going to flip this page over. As I said, I'm going to complete those slides. What you have in front of you on 127 and 128, Dave and I already know that we're probably going to finish this off. However, what you can do if you want, have a look at the question. 
It just says a particle is moving such that you've been given its displacement. When you've been given its displacement, your job is to go and go through those questions. I tend to find sketching things easier to start me off. So I've actually got sketches and then at the bottom it says find the sketch. If you want to do the sketches first, that's also a really good idea, just like I did a minute ago. And on the back page it's got another function. I just want you to change one part of the question. Dave already knows that we're changing that because what we actually wanted to ask you is not the acceleration of, at these times, but could you put the word displacement? It's on page 128. And you'll see me follow the dot. I'm playing a game of follow the dot. This has a couple of changes. So this sounds a little harder. Now Dave already knows that we will put this into the tutorial. So the very first thing, probably after the quiz, is we'd go and do these ones here to finish it off. So make sure you bring your course reader. I'll have it all completed. I don't know why that didn't want to play today. But your job is to understand you've got some redemptions if you want to come in. Some redemptions. There's, um, there is uh, drop-ins every day. Any of those that help. Thanks, Nicholas, for helping me out there. and Jaden, anyone else from my group, if you guys want your other quizzes, if you want to look at redemptions, I've got those here as well. So if you want, I'll, I'll just meet you outside because this, this guy just wants to, you know, start here. So if you want your redemption, just so you might find that time rather than wait till Thursday for it. I'll just hand it to you outside. It's all. See you guys. All right, just checking.